now joined by colleague, national championship winning coach, Urban Meyer. Coach, what's going on, man? Hi, Joel. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, so the rankings get released last night, and everyone's talking about where teams are landing and this or that. But I think that the bigger issue in college football right now actually lies within the Big Ten Conference, and it lies within the Big Ten Conference office. This six-game minimum that they're requiring teams to have and play in order to play for the conference championship um, – it looks like Ohio State's going to be right there. Like, we'll see if they play Michigan State. We'll see if they're able to play Michigan and actually qualify for this game. What do you what do you think about this six-game minimum? Do you think that they should adjust their rule uh, here in the season to make sure that we see the best team possible in that championship game? I, I think it's a good starting point, but we've discussed this many times, Joel, is that the one thing you can't be is rigid. You know, tomorrow's different than today. You know, you know everything's changing, and... And I think that's why, you know, I look at the SEC and I, I just think they were the model. Have they had issues? Sure. Have, have had a bunch of issues, but they've stayed flexible. They, you know, they started early enough that there was some flexibility. There's more of a body of work now. And the Big Ten is up against it because we started so late. And then we put in a rule like the 21 where I, I guess, you know, I, I was reading where uh, the CDC, or I think that's what it is, uh, can, they came back and said, it doesn't have to be, you know, even seven days or something. So once again, it's my point is this is changing every day that I think six games is a great place to start. Does the athletic directors and the commissioner need to stay flexible in case that's unattainable or quite simply if it's not the right thing to do? And those are all, I'm sure there's many, many conversations going. I just, I just hope that they remain flexible and keep one thing in mind. What's in the best interest of the players? Yeah, and I know, listen, Commissioner Warren is getting a lot of heat from this in, in some circles in college football. It should be noted that was a condition that most of the ADs wanted in. I don't know uh, exactly which ADs, but that was an AD stipulation that they wanted in when they started to restart the season and have those types of conversations. Uh, all right, now, now past the Big Ten season, we start looking towards the four teams that this playoff committee may uh, include in the college football playoff. Right now, Ohio State is fourth, uh, right behind Clemson. Obviously, Notre Dame and Alabama are right there at the top with their resume, and, and rightly so. Um, if Ohio State is unable to play in their conference championship game, do you still think that they will have done enough or could do enough in the next couple of weeks in order to continue on and go to the college football playoff? What, what's your thought on what that committee is doing right now? It's never been more important than ever to, for the committee. You know, normally speaking, the committee has three teams, and then they pick between two maybe three like we did in uh, 14 for the last spot. But they had data. They had uh, a lot of analytics that's available to them. And they could simply say because of interconference games, what conference is the best, what team's the best, et cetera. So, yeah, I, I think this is going to be more important than ever. The question that I have that we discussed, and we also discussed on Big Noon Kickoff, that their job is to put the best four teams in, and there's going to be a look test conversation. Who was going to make that decision on the look test? I think that's a, a major conversation, right? <laughs> Who's actually got the clicker watching the film with those 13 individuals? Uh, what are they put an emphasis on? What, what football background does that person have? You know, are they more of an East Coast guy, West Coast guy, whatever it is, coach? I think all of these things have an influence over what we could potentially get in the end. It should be noted, by the way, I, I've heard a lot of people say, well, Ohio State hasn't looked all that great. Well, in their first four games, Alabama didn't look like what they looked like in the last couple of weeks. So that opportunity for growth right now, at least, is not afforded to Ohio State like it has been afforded to Alabama. And Alabama has taken off gangbusters. Remember, after that Ole Miss game in which they gave up a lot of points, in particular a lot of passing yards, Coach, that defense has been lights right. out here down the stretch. So we'll see if Ohio State can get back onto the field, and we'll see what they look like after giving up a bunch of yards to Indiana in the passing game. Last question, uh, another team that a lot of people are looking at that could get into that playoff. Cincinnati. Uh, I think they're a really good balanced football team, well coached. And the reason I say that is because their head coach is a guy that you coached with for a number of years. You saw him as a young coach, Luke Fickle. Uh, what can you tell us about him and, and why do you think he's having so much success at Cincinnati? I think, I think coaches are a product. You know, I was very fortunate. The coaches are a product of the way you were raised. You know, I was raised in the Woody Hayes era. I was raised by a guy named Earl Bruce, Lou Holtz. Bob Davey and Sonny Lubick, those are my mentors. I'm humbled to say that. 
I think Luke Fickle is a product in one of, he was one of the, uh, he played for John Cooper. He worked for one of the great coaches in Ohio State history, Jim Trestle, and then he was on our staff, surrounded by excellent coaches. He is the, he has all the qualities to be a great coach. And the number one quality is he cares deeply for players, like deeply. This is not, and I said this uh, on Big New Kickoff as well, Joe, I think the coach's manual should have two things in there, and that is um, always put the players first, and, and he does. And this is not about him. He's not one of these coaches that he's out front. He's out, he always pushes, pushes his players out front. So uh, he's exceptional. And I think, I'm telling you what, Joel, now, here's a, going back to just Cincinnati and Cincinnati and uh, like in Ohio State. If Ohio State plays and they don't have a chance to beat a good team other than Indiana, because you look at Michigan State's record, and Michigan State is not a good team. You look at Ann Ar uh, the Wolverines, they are not a good team. They're really struggling. They could finish the season with one win. And then you see Alabama has all these big wins. And can you tell me Cincinnati has a worse schedule than Ohio State? No. Yeah, that, th this is the argument that I think is so fascinating. People have talked about Texas A&M, but to be honest with you, I think that the argument's more going to come down to Ohio State and Cincinnati because Cincinnati is balanced. They've been dominant. They've got good quarterback play. They're, they're excellent in all phases. And depending on how you look at their schedule, it could be just about equal to what the Buckeyes are facing here down the stretch, pending how many games we see the Buckeyes actually play. Uh, Coach, we appreciate your time, my man, and uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. Hey, it's good to be with you, Joel. Start your Saturday strong at 10 Eastern with a legendary college football lineup on the Big Noon Kickoff Show. Unbelievable. Big Noon Kickoff on Fox. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here. College football on Fox.